Sappiamo che Benedetto We know that Benedict came to Monte Cassino from Subiaco, where he had begun his monastic life, first in an eremitic form, and then cenobitic form, with a community. Because of the jealousy of a local priest, Benedict decided to leave Subiaco with a group of disciples and arrived to Monte Cassino around the year 529. Following the destruction of the Roman Acropolis and pagan temples dedicated to Apollo, St. Benedict began construction of various oratories, dedicated, among others, to St. Martin and St. John the Baptist. In this first monastery of the order, St. Benedict wrote down his renowned rule, shaping a monastic life centered around prayer, work, study, and hospitality. Then, first and foremost, during the Carolingian epoch, thanks to the work of Charles the Great and St. Benedict himself, the Benedictine rule got diffused and eventually becomes the unique role for Occidental monasticism. From that moment on, the Benedictine monasticism, from here in Monte Cassino, becomes not only important but unifying for the monastic experience during the reign of Charles the Great, but also in the following epochs. The ecclesial and political influence of the abbey peaked in the 11th century, during the time of the great abbot Desiderius, who later became Pope Victor III, and who not only rebuilt the abbey and re-established monastic discipline, but also saw to it that the monastery library became one of the richest in Europe by collecting and translating manuscripts from all cultures, nations, and times into Latin. Here we have two places where we preserve the literary patrimony. The first place is the archive, where all the old manuscripts are, and the other is the library, which is where we are standing right now, where all the printed books are. We have what we call an ancient source, which is the one we are looking at right now and which is composed over 32,000 volumes. By ancient sources, we mean incunables, that is, books printed after the inventions of the press by Gutenberg and all the way until 1830. However, the preservation of the many literary and cultural treasures of the Abbey proved to be not an easy feat. Throughout the centuries, the Abbey suffered several destructions, such as by the Lombards in 570, by the Saracens in 883, and by an earthquake in 1349. The most notable destruction, however, happened just 80 years ago in 1944, when the monastery was bombed during the Second World War. The zone where the monks lived the oldest part of the monastery where the cell of St. Benedict was located, was saved from destruction, so neither monks nor civilians died there, as they did in other zones. Also, the burial place of St. Benedict and St. Scholastica was somehow miraculously saved. The place was saved because a grenade that fell there didn't explode, but there was a loss of lives. And then, of course, for the symbolic value which the Abbey represented. Certainly, there was an event that in some way had a big emotional impact, certainly for this territory and the Abbey itself, but also for everything that the Abbey represented in Europe and beyond Europe. Thanks to the help of German priests, most of the Abbey's literary and artistic treasures, including those from different national museums that had been sent to the Abbey during the war for protection, were evacuated to Rome and saved from destruction. After the war, the monastery was rebuilt and the church reconsecrated by Pope St. Paul VI, who also proclaimed St. Benedict, a patron saint of Europe. St. Benedict is important because, first of all, he is a point of connection between Eastern monasticism and what you can say later became Western monasticism. And as I was saying before, St. Benedict is also known for the famous motto, Ora et Labora, work and prayer, 
to which we can also add the imperative read. But we can also add other verbs. I believe that beyond the verbs, it is the et that connects them that is the most important. So St. Benedict, I think, testifies to the importance of a unified, harmonic life. And it isn't for no reason that the Benedictine motif is Pax, peace, and that Benedict was proclaimed precisely patron saint of Europe with the bull that defined him as messenger of peace and suggested that we can all be signs of instruments of peace in the history and in relation to others, provided that we are able to find an inner peace or harmony within ourselves. While the abbey used to house over 200 monks during its golden age, the monastery is today the home of eight Benedictine monks who continue to live a quiet life of prayer, work, and study. Despite the challenges faced by the abbey and its history, the spirit of monasticism has persevered, and monastic life continues to flourish in Monte Cassino. The monasticism here at Monte Cassino was reborn from all these destructions. After all, the motto of the abbey is Suchisa Vereshit, meaning cut down, it grows again. We would like to celebrate this 60th anniversary well, since it truly indicates a rebirth. We get to look back at the destruction, but also at the new life born in the destruction.